Mr. Armstrong, I do realize that when you were on the moon, you had very little time for gazing upwards. But could you tell us something about what the sky actually looks like from the moon, the sun, the earth, the stars, if any, and so on? The sky is uh, a deep black uh, when viewed from the moon, as it is when viewed from uh, cislunar space, the space between the earth and the moon. The uh, the Earth is the only visible object other than the Sun that can be seen, although there have been some reports of seeing planets. I myself did not see planets from the surface, but I suspect they might uh, be visible. The Earth is quite beautiful from space uh, and from the Moon. It looks quite small and quite remote, but uh, it's very blue and covered with uh, white lace and <laughs> of the clouds. and. The continents are clearly seen, although they have very little color from that distance. What about the sun? Do you see any trace of the corona? No, the uh, glare from the sun on the helmet visor was too difficult to pick out the corona. The only time we could see the corona was during an eclipse of the sun from the moon. That is, when we were flying through the moon's shadow and could observe the, the, uh, the solar corona peeking out from behind the moon. Looking at the photographs that you brought back, uh, the colored photographs of the moon's surface, it seems that the color of the surface actually varies according to the angle from which you see it. Is this so? Does it, uh, does it do this? Yes, it certainly does. Uh, it's a characteristic that we observe first while uh, traveling around the moon in orbit. You can see that at the terminator, at the, uh, the, the boundary between the black part of the moon and the lighted part of the moon, uh, it was as if you were looking at a television set with the contrast turned uh, to f uh, full contrast, very black and very white. Uh, as you moved uh, further into the light, there were more and more shades of gray. But as you moved further, such that the sun was higher above the horizon, you actually start to see the uh, tans and browns appear, although uh, at a very low level. Similarly, on the surface of the moon, the same characteristic is evident. You can see uh, browns uh, if the sun is high enough. Apollo 12, for example, landed while the sun was only five yes. degrees above the horizon. So when they arrived, they saw no browns or tans anywhere, only fairly high contrast grays. But you did. But Yes, I did. The sun was 11 degrees, and Apollo 12 did also. The next day, when, the, uh, when they arose from their sleeping period and the sun was higher, of course, then the browns were observable to them. When you were actually walking about on the moon's surface and kicking about a certain amount of dust, did you notice any local color? And also, were you at all subconsciously worried about the possibility of unsafe areas? Well, the color is... Uh, as a puzzling phenomenon on the, on the moon, aside from the characteristics that I've already mentioned. Uh, you generally have the impression of being on a desert-like surface with rather light-colored hues. Uh, yet when you look at the material uh, at close range, as if in your hand, you find it's a charcoal gray, in fact, and we were never able to find any things that were very different from that color. Uh, I suspect that as we get more and more samples with future flights, we will see that there is, in fact, some color. But the optical properties on the moon are most peculiar. When you were actually walking about, did you have any difficulty in distance judging? Because I, th I think I heard you say once that uh, near afar things looked quite near. Yes, we had uh, uh, some difficulties in perception of, of, diffi uh, of distance. Uh, for example, our television camera uh, we judged to be from the cockpit of the lunar module only about uh, 50 to uh, 60 feet away, yet we knew that we had pulled it out to the full extension of a 100-foot cable. Uh, similarly, we had difficulty uh, guessing how far the hills out on the horizon might be. Uh, the peculiar phenomenon is the closeness of the horizon due to the Yes. greater curvature of the moon than we have here on Earth, of course, four times greater. And the fact that uh, it is an irregular surface with uh, crater rims overlying other crater rims, uh, you, you can't see the real horizon. You're seeing hills that are somewhat closer to you. 
there was a large crater uh, which we overflew during our final approach, which was it had hills of the order of 100 feet in height, and uh, we were only 11, 1200 feet west of that hill and we couldn't see a 100-foot high hill from 11 to 1,200 feet away. So Did you notice any obvious difference between the far side and the near side as you went around it? I mean, apart from the obvious differences in topography. No observable distant, uh, differences in color, uh, but then uh, the sun's angle was always somewhat different yeah. over there, so it would be difficult to make a uh, general uh, correlation. Mm. Uh, I would say the topography is the striking yeah, change. Yeah. Of course, as uh, all your viewers <laughs> know, there are no seas on the far <laughs> side of the moon, and it is, uh, it's all uh, highlands and uh, high mountains, big craters. So uh, it's strikingly different from the from the. There's just one more thing. I one more thing I'd like to ask you. Uh, you're one of the very very few people I think whose opinion on this is really worth having. In fact, there are only four of you. Do you think, from your knowledge of the moon, having been there, that it is going to be possible in the foreseeable future to set up scientific bases there on anything like a large scale? Oh, I'm quite certain that we'll have such bases uh, in our lifetime. Uh, somewhat like the Antarctic stations uh, and similar scientific outposts, continually manned. Although, uh, certainly, there's the problem of the environment, the vacuum, and the high and low temperatures of day and night. Still in all, in many ways, it's more hospitable than Antarctica might be. Uh, there are no storms, no snow, no high winds, no unpredictable weather uh, phenomena that we're yet uh, aware of. And the gravity is a very pleasant kind of place to work in, better than here on Earth. And uh, I, I think it would be quite, quite a pleasant place to do scientific work and quite practical. Mr. Armstrong, thank you very much. And again, let me say what a tremendous honor and privilege it's been to have you with us. Thank you.